So a question I'm quite commonly asked is um, what's the difference in latency between Ed Tracker and a more conventional um, three-point infrared tracking um, solution? Uh, this is a, a you know a homemade um, three-point infrared um, LED emitter. Very common kind of design used by um, free track and open track. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to use the two of them. I'm going to use this via the both via the open track software. Um, I'm going to use them with a common game and try and measure the latency difference between the two. Now, how on earth am I going to do that? Well, the method that I can think of that I can actually do here at home is I'm going to use a separate camera to this one. I'm going to set this one up pointing at me um, and the screen at a low resolution but a very high frame rate. So this is going to record 120 frames per second. Uh, and I'm going to capture both my head and the screen in game and then we can look at the video footage afterwards and measure the delay between my real head moving and my in-game head registering movement. Yeah? And the number of frames it takes for the one to catch up after the other is some indication of the latency, the, the lag between me moving and actually registering in game. <clears throat> I'm going to do it like for like, so the same game, same version of the software, same computer. I'm not going to change any settings in Open Track. Um, we're also going to turn off all the filtering in Open Track <clears throat> so that I don't get any introduced delay or lag from software. Um, keep it as absolutely minimal as possible. So we're really testing it right down to the devices as much as we can, or the approaches, you know. Um, okay, so I'm going to go and get this all adorned onto my headset. I'm using, camera-wise, I'm using a Sony PS3i. Now, this is one of the higher-end, really recommended cameras to be using because it's capable of a very high frame rate. If, if we were doing this with a cheapy 30 frames per second webcam, uh, this really would come out pretty poorly. Um, so I'm giving it the best opportunity I can. I'm going to run this camera at 75 hertz, 640 by 480 um, to keep that refresh rate up and get the, the resolution and the, um, and the refresh rate as good as we can get. Uh, okay, right, let's get that set up. We've explained what we're doing. Um, let's make a start. Okay, so what I've got, it's all connected. Let's not get all looped up here. The air track is on here, it's not connected at the moment. So I've got this uh, fitted on the side, it's turned on. Yep, so we can see just up here, it's now tracking the points. <clears throat> and it's nice and responsive. Uh, I've got no filter configured, um, but otherwise we're on open track 2.3 here. I've got um, your truck simulator up. I mean, the, the same results apply to any game, obviously, uh, as long as we're just consistent with testing in the same game. Um, I've got this camera here, hello, recording at a pretty crappy resolution, but, but a very high frame rate. So let's don this headgear. Let's just recenter ourselves. Okay, and let's go in game. <clears throat> now I'm just parked up somewhere here in the truck. It's not about moving and gameplay and stuff. So ignore the jitter. Um, this is because we've got no filter turned on, and it does highlight an issue with the the the, the um, point tracking solution that it does require a lot of filtering, and that's only going to worsen the latency anyway. But no filtering. It's a little bit spotty and jittery, but you know we can see the movement mapping there. Yeah, and it's pretty good. It's pretty you know, it's responsive enough, I guess. Uh, but how responsive is it? So what I'm going to do is, let's just recenter absolutely again. I'm going to do some movements to left and right as quick as I can. Like this we can, as soon as we start seeing my head movement, we can measure later. So we can come back after this recording. I'm gonna grab the footage from the other camera and we'll have a look and we'll see what the difference is. Right, nothing there to, to see until we go into the detail. So I'm gonna stop this now, swap over to the Ed Tracker and repeat the same kind of movements um, with the same setup, but just with Ed Tracker. So bear with me. Okay, so we're back now with the Ed Tracker on there. Um, still the same game. Uh, open track, I've literally just flicked it over to use the joystick input instead of the free track 1.1 plugin. I've had to invert a couple of axes because they just you know, work the opposite way compared to um, the, the point model. But otherwise, the same. The same curves, same mapping curves, no filter configured. Um, okay, so let's just go and repeat what we did before. 
going to the truck. I'm just going to press the home button just to. Oh, it's pretty good actually, but I'll just, just recenter it. So you can see it's all working. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to look ahead and then I'm going to flick to the right, flick to the left, flick to the right, flick to the left, flick to the left, flick to the right. Okay. And again, let's go and review the footage now and let's see how long it takes for the in-game movement to actually register following my real world head moving. Let's go and have a look at that now. Uh, we're just going to use some video editing uh, software to just step through the video frame by frame from this lower quality but higher frame rate camera and see what the delay is. Okay, so we're going to go through this video. I'm going to use um, AVI DMOX on Linux here because uh, Adobe won't do 120 frames per second in the, the um, version I've got. But you can see I'm stepping through the raw footage here and the frame number is down here in the left and we've also got the, uh, the time code here. Uh, so the idea is that I'm using this, this footage to find a point where um, my head is, is doing one of the, the moves off to, to the left or the right. Um, and then we're going to let's find one first. There's one there where I'm just flicking to the right so let's just play that through uh, just look. We're just looking for where my head starts to move to the right. There it is. Okay, right. So you see my head's moving. I'm going to back this up now, frame by frame, until my head's back at the straight ahead position. So when it's not moving anymore. So still moving there. There's about. There we go. Bring it forward again. Just starts to move there. So back it up. So about 11:059. About that frame. Um, now if here, uh, what we're going to see, see here, this is our current frame, 11059, now I'm going to watch the screen, I'm going to step it forward until I see movement on the game uh, screen. So you see my head starting to move, but there's nothing happening in game yet. Yep. So as I step it forward, there we just start to see the game footage m move, yeah, the head moving game on the truck. So here we are, 11079. So from 5, 9, 7, 9, 20 frames have passed from my head moving to the game actually showing any sort of movement. Um, okay, so uh, we've got an idea for, uh, I've gone and checked some other ones as well. So I, I know that up here at 12, 9, 3, 8, um, I start some head movement there. It's just something I looked up earlier. Uh, and again, we can step through that and just verify. Uh, and I think there we get slightly fewer. We get... Um, 17 frames difference between that and game movement. So you get the idea. So that's it with uh, the infrared setup. Now let's uh, go over the head tracker footage. So same procedure again. Here's the footage from the other camera. Let's find somewhere that we know is good. Uh, looking for some suitable head movement. So I'm going to play from there here. And just looking for, you know, a, a flick to, there we go, one to the right, that'll do. So let's stop that there, let's wind it back a bit. Uh, and again, stepping through frame by frame. So I need to come forward from this. It's going to be around here somewhere. So watch my head, still at the moment. And we're looking for the bit where it starts, starts moving to the right. Uh, there we go, okay, starting to see movement now, so I'm going to back that up, so I'm back pointing ahead, there we go, about there, uh, there I'm just starting to see movement there in the head, okay, so 21190 is the frame count there, uh, yeah, near enough, maybe uh, 21191, uh, yeah, just there, 21191, okay, so from there, we're going to move forward now. We're watching the uh, the head's done. We're going to watch the game footage now. So we're going to step forward, and we're looking for some movement in game. There, it's just starting to see some pixels moving on the screen. There. So what's that? That's two one two oh three, I think. Bang there, yeah, just starting to move through. Cool. 
Okay. So there we go. Uh, frame is two one two oh three. So we've got two one one nine one. So that's twelve frames. Uh, twelve frames of difference with that. So we took two readings for infrared there. Um, the first one was 20 frames. The second one was 17 frames um, of difference. I, I did a couple more points in the video just to check and it was consistent. They're all between 17 and 20. I've got nothing better or worse than that. So if we average that at 18.5, uh, basically every frame is one 120th of a second at that camera speed. So you multiply that up, you've got 154 milliseconds of delay with the infrared between your head starting to move and the video showing it moving in game. 154 milliseconds. Then we flipped to Ed Tracker, we took two readings there. Uh, one was 12 frames of difference, one was 11. Um, I did a few more checks in the videos and some were down to about eight or nine. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it pessimistic and go with uh, the average there. I'm gonna go with 11.5 between my 12 and 11. Uh, so again, if you multiply that out, you get 96 milliseconds of delay. So 154 down to 96, 60 milliseconds quicker, or a 40% um, improvement. Um, does that really mean anything? We're talking milliseconds here, is that noticeable? Um, it might be a question you're asking. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, when, you, when you're playing, your your brain will notice that that kind of reduction in latency and uh, I, I certainly notice it and if you don't want to take my word for it and those numbers other people who've used we've spoken to who've used ed tracker and have previously used track ir or infrared tracking they've all said the same thing that the, the snappiness the the latency is noticeably quicker so you know uh, that's the hard numbers of it i'm uh, only addressing the issue of latency here. Uh, this this discussion isn't about six degrees of freedom versus three or size or blah blah. You know anything like that. Just answering the the, the issue around latency. Um, in terms of the sensor on Ed Tracker, the the speed with which it measures a movement and then reports it onto the USB um, joystick that's on your PC is incredibly quick. That's that's down to about eight milliseconds on average. So. The data that, that we get into your PC is as quick as, you know, pretty quick. Um, but, uh, I'll just turn that back on. Um, but, you know, once it's got into your PC, it's got to go through various driver layers, then get into your game and software, and your game's then got to render the change. So obviously the delay uh, is, is, is added to a lot on the PC side. And that's why, you know, track IR or, or the, the open source infrared tracking uh, systems that we've seen here, they're they're always going to be worse off because you know you've got the camera's got to pass capture the image, it's got to relay that image via software into your PC through the driver layer. Open tracks then got to pass that image, pass the spots, run some mathematics on it to calculate what that means in terms of head position. Uh, it's then got to relate that through the track IR driver layer into your game, and then the game's got to do all the rendering, same as the tracker. So it's got so much more to do, it, it's always going to be at that disadvantage. Um, but yeah, okay, for people who ask the question about latency, hopefully that answers it for you. See you later.